pooling that is used, type of this, type of that, all categorize the data. Or for instance, a pharma company said, we want to understand what explains the reasons for why our service request processes are delayed. A bank said, we want to understand why our servers are crashing. Um, start we said, there's a serial, several serials we were talking about. We want to understand what impacts the TV rating. Tell me what can I do to influence the TV ratings. This is a talk in itself, but let's not get into that. Uh, <coughs> we are currently working with a bank that says, we want to know who's going to leave before they actually leave, before they actually tell us whether they've made their decision or not. And all of these have just one characteristic in common, which is that we are trying to answer a certain pattern of question, what explains something. And the bulk of the data is categorical, and because in 2012 we didn't have a technique, we still don't have an alternate technique, we created one, <laughs> and this is called Blueprints. This talk is basically about this. Uh, there is a library, I will share the link with you uh, towards the end of the talk. But uh, the focus of this session is on explaining what this technique is and how it works. Before I go ahead, I'll talk about a couple of things. Uh, firstly, this is a simple tutorial. I'm not going to talk about big data, I'm not going to talk about neural networks, I'm not going to talk about machine learning, I'm not going to talk about AI. The most complicated thing that I will be covering is the t test. And you don't need to know much about the t test to be able to get this thing. But as Amit said, there's a difference between simplicity and ease. I'm focusing on simplicity. Ease is a different matter altogether. Uh, also, I'm not going to try and make this entertaining. I'm just going to focus on teaching because, as Ted Victor put it, right, people mistake entertainment for education. We had a lot of an interesting talk. I say, oh, that was really cool. What did you learn out of it? I don't know, but it was really cool. <coughs> and I'm guilty of uh, that myself on a number of occasions. I put very down to earth. So. Uh, <coughs> I will be using spreadsheets. I'm tempted to say Excel, but that's the purpose is not to say Excel is great. Excel is great. Not the point. The point is that spreadsheets are great. Um, and, uh, you may have uh, heard of or even read Fred Brooks' No Super Bullet, which talks about how after the advent of high level programming languages, there hasn't been something in programming that dramatically transformed the country. Though there are a few exceptions, databases are one such exception, spreadsheets are another such exception. And I truly believe that spreadsheets are one of the greatest gifts that software has given to takes the ability to process data away from an esoteric small group that has access to sophisticated programming tools to pretty much the bulk of the world and you could argue that more analysis is being done today on Excel than pretty much anything else or any spreadsheet for that matter. That's all we're going to do, we're just going to play around with spreadsheets. <coughs> what I'm going to do is actually take up an exercise. We will answer one simple question using this data set. Do calculators, does the use of calculators actually help students score more in mathematics. So let's open the data set. I'll make it a bit bigger. I think that we'll be able to see it by the idea. It's the right size. Uh, is this good enough? Are the people at the back even? Okay, fine, fine. Uh, so the data set is fairly straightforward. For each student, and I've taken a small uh, sample of the data set. It's only the students in the state of Maharashtra that I'm picking. So we have about 8,000 students that have been sampled in Maharashtra. So we have a student ID, which is a long number. We have a district code. We have the gender. We have the age, and so on. And the information about calculators is stored in a column called use calculator, which is sometimes empty, or it can have a yes or no. So in order to explore this, what I'm going to do is create a pivot table. I used a shortcut, but not really about how I got the pivot table. And I'll answer. Uh, I'll say, let me group by the use of calculators. So we have three possibilities. So that you can see it a little easier. Yes, no, or blank. So let's see uh, what is the average mathematics marks of the students. Uh, rather than count, I want average. But to be fair, I also want to count. So let's take some other column like the state and go from not that. So that we have here. So uh, roughly, uh, let's in fact represent all of these as percentages. So I'll have this as a percentage of the column total. And I will keep these as they are, but obviously I don't need this many decimals. So let's get rid of that and show it in a smaller position. And I also find it easier to color code it so that you'll be able to quickly see what the performance is. And this is also something that I need to keep zero decimal places. So what this tells me is yes, using calculators gives me a higher score in mathematics than no, not using calculators. And interestingly, the people 
and there are 24% of them who left this blank, not indicating whether they are using calculator or not, are firing even ones. Uh, why they have left it blank, I have some theories on it, that they didn't understand the question. So which means that you have bigger problems than the use of calculators, you have problems in the language, right. <coughs> so, but that's just a theory. However, what I can say is that, at least from this, the use of calculators seems to give people a higher score. Now, having said that, however, causation, causation, correlation is not causation, it's just a hint. Now, <coughs> there are two ways to take this statement. The first is to focus on the first part, which is to say correlation is not causation. Therefore, the fact that I have found a correlation is meaningless and is therefore not actual. <coughs> However, that's throwing the baby out of the bathwater. <coughs> when on the other hand, you look at it and say, look, here's a hint, there's something going on between calculators and mathematics. Not that I needed this analysis to know that, but I was making an obvious uh, <coughs> information in the first place. It at least merits investigation. Maybe those that score high on mathematics tend to like calculators and use them, possibly. So it could be in reverse. But at the very least, the uh, use of calculators and scoring high in mathematics do seem to be associated. And we can check this association for many other things. So, for example, can I uh, answer the question to computers help in mathematics? Let's quickly do that. So, instead of using calculators, I'll get rid of that and say using computers. And the short answer is yes, using computers also helps. Not using computers doesn't help that much. Obviously, not answering the question does no good for the student. But you notice that the difference between these is not so large. But before we go into the difference between these two, <coughs> let's ask the question, is this meaningful or is this just plain random? When I was a kid, uh, <coughs> we, uh, my name starts with A and therefore I get called in class for many things in alphabetical order and end up being one of the first, which puts me at a certain disadvantage. I've got to uh, be a little more prepared because I could be called upon right at the beginning. But then people also said, look, that's an advantage because then you're getting trained to be more prepared for impromptu things and that's going to be an advantage. Now, <coughs> this is a classic question, right? So does it actually make a difference? Does the first letter of the child make a difference to, the, to their marks or not? I'll do a quick poll. How many people think the first letter of the child makes a difference to the marks? How many people think it does not? Okay, does not is a majority. So until last year, I was consistently telling people that no, it makes no difference whatsoever. And then I went back <coughs> this year and did a rehash of this for specific states. It turns out that in Karnataka, it does make a difference. <coughs> and those who, whose name starts with the letter A do score higher and it is statistically significant. But this isn't a talk about numerology. <laughs> Let's not get into that. Uh, the thing though is we do have the ability to differentiate between pure randomness and uh, what is actually significant by doing the t-test. For those of you who don't know the t-test, it's a magical thing that basically tells you if you have the same average of For those of you who know the t-test, you know too much. <laughs> so let's apply the t-test. Uh, I want to check whether the use of calculators is actually making a difference or not. Now, what do I want to do that? I want to see if the population as a whole is different from the sample that uses calculators in a statistically significant way. In other words, is the average of this higher than the other? So, how do I do that? In Excel. So, I'm going to open that set of people who use calculators. That's this set. And I'm going to take, a, take their maths marks, which is a problem somewhere towards the end. Okay, that's their maths percentage. And we'll put this on the new column here. Uh, and I'm just going to zoom in. So what I have is data for approximately 3,000 students who have used calculators, and each column represents one of those students. Now I don't have maths marks for everybody, but that's okay. The other population that I want to take is basically every single student. So let's take that. And again, I don't have maths marks for everybody, but that's okay. Now I will in the data analysis tool pack, which is an optional add-in that you can install on Excel. There are a whole bunch of e-tests. There is a pad, two sample, blah, blah, blah. There is a two sample assuming equal variances and there is a two sample assuming unequal variances. Now here, when you get stuck, the simple rule of thumb to follow is try them all one by one. It doesn't really make a difference. The good part about large data is that the whole principle that statistics is based on goes for a toss. <coughs> statistics is based on the assumption that it's very difficult to get data. Therefore, we have to make the best use out of it. 
which means that we have to sample because working with data is difficult. Getting the data for sampling in the first place is very difficult. With data analysis, what we have is usually the entire population. And we have systems that can process billions of data points, like on your mobile, let alone your desktop. What sampling are we talking? The difference between equal variances and unequal variances, unequal variances for this particular data set is in the 16th decimal place. We have bigger problems in the 16th decimal place. So let's just do the t-test with equal variances for all I care. And this says tell me the column which has the first data set and the column that has the second data set. So we'll take the first data set and the second data set. I do have labels, so I'm going to ignore those and click OK. And this tells me that there is the it tells me a bunch of things. Now, the important thing to know about statistics is that usually everything is ignorable. Most of the stuff that we have given is not really relevant. The one thing that matters is what the difference, what the, what the result of the test is. In this particular case, the test tells me that the first group, which happens to be the calculated group, and the second group, uh, which is everyone, the difference is 33 versus 31. This is a small difference in the uh, in this. Now, other important thing is to look at the p-value, and there are two p-values. Uh, let me start with the two tape, and then I'll tell you what the difference is. So this one says that there is a 0 0.00014 p-value. Now, what the p-test does is tells you whether one particular population of sample is different from another sample. The base hypothesis is that they are the same. What this is saying is that there is a 0 0.00014 chance that they are the same. Basically, it means they are different. And statisticians will word this as the null hypothesis has been rejected. What it basically means is your original statement that they are the same is not true. In other words, they are different. So, in other words, it's saying that there is less than a 1% chance that these two groups actually are getting the same marks. In other words, there is less than a 1% chance that the use of calculators does not help. That's pretty decent. Now, when I make that statement, <coughs> some of some people may wonder: Should we take the one-tail test or the two-tail test? Well, look, <coughs> if it makes a difference, then the conclusion is questionable in the first place. If if one is tiny, the other will always be half of the first. And the difference between these a factor of two is nothing. We are talking about orders of magnitude here. If you get a conclusion that's probably one percent wrong, probably worry a bit. If you have a conclusion that's probably 0.1 percent wrong then uh, say, okay, I've got a decent confidence. Now, between 1 and 0.1, there's an order of magnitude difference. So, you really shouldn't be worried about it. But of course, the t-test suffers from the classic XKCD problem, right? So, you apply a t-test and you've got this card and that's uh, uh, Yep. So, <coughs> jelly beans cause acne. I've never really figured out how to pronounce it. So, they do a test on whether it makes a difference and whether specifically the color of the jelly bean makes a difference. So, does purple jelly have an influence, does brown jelly have an influence, does uh, uh, pink jelly have an influence, etc. And all of this is done with a p-value of 0 0.05, which means that look, just make sure that there's at least a 5%, there's no more than a 5% chance that you're wrong. You do all of these and somewhere along the line, one of these, like green jelly, has actually a significance of less than 0.05. Maybe that causes acne, right? and of course the conclusion gets totally distorted. The green jelly does actually cause acne. Now, obviously, the statisticians, the non-statisticians among you, didn't get this joke. But uh, <laughs> what it really meant was, if you apply something like a t-test, not on one of one sample, but on dozens and dozens of them, sometimes you will get things wrong simply because you have chosen a weak cutoff. You said one percent is okay. Now, what that means is that if you do that 1% is okay 100 times, there's a pretty good chance that one of them will actually be a wrong conclusion. So, in this particular technique, we are applying the t-test on a large uh, variety of categories. We are checking for calculators, we are checking for computers, we are checking for x, we are checking for y. So, the cutoff that we need to take for the t-test is a lot stricter than otherwise. What that cutoff is, is entirely up to you. Now, <coughs> The last thing is which one helps more. So, we saw the result earlier. For computers, uh, the result was that there is only about a, so it's calculators right here. For calculators, there is about a 3, well, 2 and a half percentage point difference. But whereas for the use of computers, there is only a 0.2 percent difference. Now, let's assume that this is statistically significant and it turns out that it is. <laughs> what this means is that 
more than whether this was important or not, what matters is that the use of calculators is probably a stronger correlation with math marks than computers. Computers is fairly generic. So this gives me the ability to say that calculators are a stronger influence on marks, at least math marks, than computers. And this is the basis of the technique. What that leads to is a result that's on grammar.com slash NAS and you can happily explore. It says here are all the factors that make a difference and if I look at the maths marks, what makes the largest difference is the father's education and the father's occupation, understandable. And computer use. Maharashtra was the data set that we saw. Nationally, there's a huge difference and there's a big difference between states which we'll come to in a bit. Followed by mother's occupation helping in households. What helps total marks? Father's education and occupation, mother's education and occupation. This is a standard pattern. Parents help more than anything else. And we figured a bunch of other things as well based on this, like watching TV, right? How does it make a difference? Turns out that watching TV once a week is roughly the sweet spot, but not for mathematics. Students who watch TV even once a week or particularly excessively, they just tank in their mathematics marks. Father's education makes a huge difference, but we find that in patriar patriarchal societies like Punjab, the mother makes a has a larger influence. In a matriarchal society, uh, let, uh, let me show you what it's like in matriarchal society, let's take uh, West Bengal. So in West Bengal, uh, the influence is uh, primarily the father, even though it's a matriarchal state. And in places like Punjab, the highest influencer oops, uh, that, yeah, is primarily the mother, which is kind of counterintuitive in one way, but maybe intuitive because they are staying at home and they are the primary caregiver for children perhaps. Cricket, when we applied it, we found that when you are playing first, when you are batting first, what really makes a difference to whether you will win or not is which team you are playing against. But if you are bowling first, what makes a, diff a larger difference is who is umpiring. <coughs> and we have the list of the umpires who are very strict or generous. Um, <coughs> may I come in, madam? Turns out that when you want to pick costumes for Sanjana, it makes no difference what costume you pick, they are all equally good. But she is a disaster in genes when it comes to TVR ratings. I haven't seen the serial, I don't know what she looks like in jeans. But on the other hand, uh, night song sequences work phenomenally well for her. See, the thing is, all of this is based on relatively simple techniques, but the automation behind it and a certain amount of data cleansing is what goes in into the bulk of the problem. That's the repository, grammar.com slash, sorry, grammar slash autolysis on GitHub. It is extremely well documented.